All right, I'm pumped. We got a big haul here. Going down the line, we will go through package one, two, three, and four. And uh, I'm gonna try to make this a little bit more interesting than just a haul video. So I'll try to throw in little tidbits of advice here and there about the current market. People seem to like uh, videos where I do that. Since I have a huge list of books that I'm interested in, but they tend to be pretty uh, pricey books from the Silver Age, Marvel types that I like. And so uh, what I try to do is I try to bid at about what I think I get, a, I would have about a 25% chance of winning with that bid. Or in other words, I bid low enough where I think I only have about a one in four chance of winning the book. And when I do that, if I get the numbers just about right, I usually actually end up winning about one out of every four books that I bid on. Because every once in a while, you just find holes in auctions here and there. So I try to spread my net really wide, never bidding more than what the last book sold for at auction, usually bidding more like about one third under that, or, or sorry, not one third, 30% less than that, or 25% less than that at worst case. And so all these books that you see, I'm very happy about getting. Oh, baby, baby. Yes, man. Uh, let's get this out of the bag real quick. Take a better look at it. I know it's not the greatest condition, guys, as a 5.0, but for me, this is a nice-looking book. And this cover is the shit, if you ask me. One of my favorite covers from the Silver Age, and now it is in my possession. Love it. Silver Surfer number four. Amazing cover art, yeah? Man. In my opinion, I'm probably getting sick of hearing me saying this, but these early FF books are so undervalued compared to the other major Marvel uh, runs from the Silver Age. I mean, this is the one that got started at all, man. The FF. Fantastic Four, Kirby and Lee. Going off taking a chance on a different kind of take on comic books and I think aside from the historical aspect that you know, I keep harping on, the actual quality of the books and the freaking stories and the art is just so damn good man so damn good and obviously you know my theory I think at this point if you watch my videos on getting some of these more expensive books in low grade as long as they present fairly well, and in my opinion this one does present fairly well, most of the issues along the spine, I'm happy with it, man. I am happy with it. Another situation just like that. Bam! Fantastic Four number 10, man, but look at this 2.0. It's a beautiful 2.0, if you ask me. Major crease in here and here. See that? I love finding 2.0s that have major damage on the back cover like this. Look at this. It's horrendous, yeah? Hideous. And some people would hate that, and they're probably cringing just looking at that. A chunk. Huge chunk taken out of it. But it's out of the back cover, man. And I do not care as much. And CGC grades almost as harshly for that back cover damage as they would for front cover damage. So what do you get? You get a pretty looking 2.0. When you see the front of it, you're thinking, that looks better than 2.0. And that's why. But I love... I love paying the huge discount that I get for that chunk out of the back cover. To me, it's not that big of a deal. To most of the people on the market, or at least the way the market responds, it's a big deal. So, you know, try to find your niche here and there. If there's some kind of defect that you don't care about, try to find books that have that and take your time trying to find that. Don't just pay full price for, you know, beautiful looking books. Six and sevens and eights and ups are awesome. But if you don't have a lot of money to spend on that kind of, qual on that kind of grade for these books, this is a, just, you know, kind of a poor man's way of getting this done. I don't want to say a poor man's way. These are still not cheap books, but a nice way to try to save some money. All right, next bag coming up. Real quick, just another good point that I actually heard Cougar Comics make in one of his early, early videos, because I go back and watch some of his older videos because he's one of my favorites, is another benefit of getting a CGC or, you know, any kind of slab book. Um, if you don't get a lot of slapped books, it's a good idea to get just a couple because you can get an idea if you end up cracking them out of the slabs like I do often with these low grades of what 
a 2.0 actually looks like. What does CGC actually think a 2.0 looks like? You know, you can take a look at it, get a look at the actual example, which is probably the best way to learn. And some people might be surprised, unfortunately, with what uh, CGC considers certain grades, but it's worth, or other companies, but it's worth taking a look. For this one, this one, for instance, doesn't look all that bad to me, man. You know, it's got this horrible back cover. We already talked about this. It's got a nice looking front cover. And now you get an idea of what CGC dings for that back cover damage. It goes all the way down to a 2.0. Useful type of information. Here's a 4.5, step up. Front cover doesn't look all that different from that 2.0 we were just looking at but it doesn't have the back cover damage, right? So you get an idea for the differences you can get with grades. And then as you move up, I don't really have a lot of examples right here, but maybe we'll see a couple more as I go through these books. You can start to see the differences with higher and higher grades. Because how are you gonna know if you get a good deal on these books if you don't know how to grade? So much of the price is determined by grade. If you don't know how to accurately grade, you can never know if you really got a good deal on books, right? Okay, just wanted to say that. Okay, package number two. I cannot explain the difficulty I have had getting a decent deal on Daredevil number 4. And something around a 4 to a 5.5 is what I was looking for. And I finally pulled it off, although I still, on some of these books, to be honest, I did a double check between the last video and now, and there were a couple books. This is one of those books, and the other book is this one. I don't think there are any others, but these two, I actually broke my rule of thumb. The Silver Surfer number four, this Daredevil number four. I broke my rule of thumb and I paid, I think, maybe like five or ten dollars more than the average of what these books sold for in this condition in 2014. And that's a rare thing for me to do, but I really, oops, knocked the camera there. I really wanted these books. And uh, I'll pull the trigger sometimes like that, you know. I get so many books that I usually average pretty well, but every once in a while I'll do it. And Daredevil number four, ah, oh man, I love so many things about this book, I cannot even explain to you. Spideys, I've kind of slowed down on my picking up Spideys, but if I can catch good deals, you know, like I said, I throw out a wide net of bids, so if I can catch one here or there, it happens. This is what I'm lucky to have, number 21, the Beetle, very cool. And this is the Spidey I am the most happy to have, actually, even though you see it number 7 behind here. To be honest, I'm more happy to have this number 13. I really wanted 13. I've been looking for it for a long time. It's a very popular one. I'm not the only one who seems to like Mysterio here. One point five, an interesting grade. You gotta be really careful when you're dealing with grades below levels of two. Because strange things can start to happen in terms of what different people consider knocking the book down to 1.5 versus a 1 versus a 0.5. And because I'm very into these uh, super key Silver Age books, um, I often, not often, but more often, more often than most I would say, I've had to buy books that are below levels of 2, and I've had to learn some lessons the hard way, but I've also figured some things out. So, you know, this is one of those cases again where once I'm going to crack this out, I'm going to learn just to have another example on my memory banks of what CGC, in this case, considers a 1.5. I see why. Okay, this is something that ETA Nick pointed out to me. Check this out, guys. Sorry for taking so long on this, but I think you'll find this inf information uh, interesting, hopefully. You see this? Water damage. It's got a tear here, too, but why? I was trying to figure out why this would be down to 1.5. This is why. I guarantee you, if I look at the CGC notes, this is why. Water damage. CGC grades super harshly for water damage. An unusual uh, an unusual pickup for me. I do not have many Superman comics. The ones I do have tend to be from the Golden Age. And this one is, of course, also from the Golden Age, 1948. A very unusual Superman cover from Action Comics. Action Comics number 116. Pretty cool. Keeping the train rolling here. Moving on to package number three. Looks like it could be a goodie. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, if you're familiar with the Tales of Suspense Silver Age run, it's the first time they pair Iron Man and Captain America together. You see that there, the double feature begins, which makes Captain America's first solo story since the 1950s, which is pretty cool. A major book in my book. <laughs> no pun intended. 
and uh, I'm happy with this 3.0. I am happy with it indeed. Let's take a look at the back cover. Not too bad. It's got some spine roll, obviously. CGC grades very harshly for uh, spine roll, as they should. Spine roll is a major issue as far as affecting the longevity of a book, which is a whole other issue. I kind of take issue with all uh, grading companies and all grading systems. I think that they should, uh, the grading scales should affect, sorry guys, I know I'm kind of getting a little bit off on market here, but I'm trying to do a lot of market related stuff, but I am so excited about these books, believe me. <laughs> a lot of these I'll be cracking out and reading very soon, so I'm pumped. But uh, real quick, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> Lost my train of thought. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh, the grading. Um, I think that you know, grading companies should take into account um, condition issues on books that are likely to affect the longevity of a book, like a spine split. You know, is basically a time bomb for a book if it's handled. Mold is basically a time bomb for a book as long as you leave it in bad shape. I think they should grade really harshly for those types of defects that. Um, make it unlikely that a book will stay in the current grade that it's in in the future, it'll probably go down in the future. I wish that they graded up more harshly for that. And I have to pay a lot of attention to notes, to grading notes, to make sure that I don't have to wind up with books that have spine splits and mold issues. I still have my problems here and there. I think I've actually shown a couple in a video. I had that issue with the early Daredevil. But, uh, yeah, that's my rant on that. This, <laughs> such an awesome buy for me, man. I was uh, looking to get Mighty Mouse number one, and it went for a freaking unbelievable price dude I think it went for it was like a Mighty Mouse 1 6.0 and I think it went for something like $600 or something yeah and this is my first Mighty Mouse comic and I loved Mighty Mouse he was the man on TV for me Saturday morning cartoons I loved Mighty Mouse uh, and I just wasn't willing to pay that kind of money on a Mighty Mouse cartoon so I was like alright forget number one let's go with Terry Tunes which was Mighty Mouse appeared in a few times or 46 because it's got an awesome Mighty Mouse cover you know it even says starring Mighty Mouse the star of tomorrow this is T.O.S. Tales of Suspense number 44 early Iron Man I'm trying to clean up all these early Iron Mans and I can he's in his clunky gold armor you know Number 39 is just pretty much unobtainable for me. Well, it's not true, but I'm not willing to pay what 39 goes for. I think it's one of the more uh, overpriced keys, to be honest. If I had a Holy Grail, people have asked me this question, what is my Holy Grail comic that I wish I could get? Uh, it is not, believe it or not, Fantastic Four number one. That is definitely on my top five list, but my Holy Grail comic would be The Incredible Hulk number one. You know, one of the more rare books to find in good condition and it goes for just crazy numbers these days i'll never be able to get that book at least not in today's market but that's my answer hulk number one is my holy grail that i wish i could have which i probably never will but that's cool with me because i still get books like this tales of suspense number 42 man creator 4.0 again trying to clean up here on these early iron mans and ever since gene colin died rest in peace sir he's one of the greats in my mind one of the greatest artists ever on par with Jack Kirby, I think he should get more credit than he does. I love what he did on the early Daredevils, Mr. Gene Colan. So ever since he died recently, you know, there's been the crazy bump in the speculation market with Iron Man, especially Iron Man number one has got a crazy value jump. But I suspect that'll go back down again soon enough, so I'm just kind of trying to wait. I'm not overbidding on any Iron Man books, but I'm still getting lucky enough to pick up on a couple of them. This one has a tear in the back cover, you can see. That might be why they graded it at 4.0, even though it looks pretty decent otherwise. And we'll move on to the last package which is the raw books take a quick break here all right here we go man package number four the raw files <laughs> raw books my favorite and you can see i decided to make a little backdrop here with my favorites from what we've seen so far all right Okay, let's start with the, uh, the worst of it, huh? This is actually a lot that I got for my friend. A bunch of ratty, ratty <clears throat> early Daredevils, because Daredevil is his favorite. Daredevil number two. Daredevil number four, which I told you I've had a hard time getting. This one's missing the better part of its upper left-hand corner cover, so we decided to cut out the arrow here, if you can see that. But, you know, he's not going to really care. He'll be so happy to have these early Daredevils, I'm telling you. And uh, he deserves it, man. You know, he's uh, got a 
It's had a had a rough run of things in the last few years. Is all I'm gonna say. And he deserves some freaking good comic books, especially since he appreciates Daredevil. Man, I'm telling you. And I got uh, these four books. You're seeing here. This one has the same issue here on the cover. You can see really ratted up books. Daryl Rice's books, apparently, whoever the heck that is. <laughs> I got these four books, Daredevil number two, four, 16, and five. Let me look here just to make sure I'm not lying to you guys. This is one of the few times I'll give you an actual price quote. This is for my buddy, not for me. And these were not going to be for resale, so I don't mind saying. Uh, let me see. Okay. I got them for 45 bucks for these four books. So an average of 15 bucks a book for Daredevil number, in horrible condition, I admit, but Daredevil number five. Two. Two's actually not that bad. This might be even greater than 2.0. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> that might be being generous. Maybe 1.5. But 2, 4, and 16. So I hope that uh, he'll like those. That's pretty cool. Now back to me. Me, 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 me. <laughs> okay, Daredevil number 6. I'm trying to complete my Daredevils number 1 through 50, and I'm very close to doing that. Pretty excited about that. Daredevil number 8 for Stiltman. Second red costume appearance for Mr. BD. If you guys are watching the Netflix series of Daredevil, leave a comment and let me know what you think about that series. I think it's freaking unbelievable. The Kingpin, and if you've gotten as far as I have with the binge watching all the way up to, uh, what's his name, Stick. In episode 7, holy crap, it is freaking so good. Huh, this one they have in super thin my light for some reason. Daredevil number 12. Number 18, uh, I want to say this should be the first appearance of the Gladiator, but I am honestly not sure. There may have been one before this. Don't know. I think this is the first appearance of the Gladiator. Let me know if I'm wrong about that, people. Number 9, an awesome, awesome book. I think this is Wally Wood doing Daredevil here. Sure looks like Wally Wood. Daredevil number 10. You can see I went a little Daredevil crazy here. Number 11. Number 13. Some of these are doubles for me, but I needed to get slightly better condition on them. I can't remember if these were in a lot or not. I would have to check on that. Number 14, very cool yellow cover. Number 15, another double for me. I think these must be part of a lot because I don't think I would have bid on this book on its own. Those Daredevils must have been part of a lot. I'm not sure how good of a deal I got on them, but I'm always happy pretty much with lots that I went on because I put in crazy low offers on tons of lots. And sometimes I win them. Rarely I win them, but when I win them, it's nice because I put in such a low offer, I'm happy when I win it. Number 19. Looks like these are all Daredevils, guys. An homage to Mr. Daredevil this week, which is appropriate given that the Netflix Daredevil series came out, yes? Number 20 with the owl. I love the owl. And last one, number 21. All right, that is it. I am off on a trip. I will see you guys in a couple weeks. I'll probably be watching your YouTube videos, but that's it for me, man. You know, my favorites from this all, if I had to say, are these two bad boys right here. Daredevil number four and Silver Surfer number four. Let me know what your favorites were, if you feel so inclined, later on.